Well, ladies and gentlemen, here we are. The final part of the Genesis miniseries, and the conclusion to the Sonic 2 adaption. Where we last left off, Sonic, Tails, and the Sally Trio were off to shut down Dr. Eggman's facilities. Sonic wanted to take the fight to Eggman. Well, he and Tails go off to do so after seeing a vision of Sally's demise. The Sally Trio moved on to Oil Ocean while Sonic storms Metropolis Zone. Meanwhile, Dr. Eggman's ready to transform the planet using the Death Egg and all seven Chaos Emeralds, which he somehow gathered off-screen. I'm going to start with the Sally Trio subplot first because it's short, and I want to summarize all the Sonic bits together. They're running away from Badnix, wishing Sonic was here. Sally more so. They get trapped by spikes, and the Badnix firepower causes Sally and Antoine to fall off the platform. Boomer saves Sally, which triggers a series of old universe images. Antoine, however, lands in one of those green and yellow checkered cannons. It starts shooting him to some others until he destroys the Badnix. This here is a bizarre combination of hilarity, awesomeness, and lameness, the last one applying to the Badnix. Seriously, Eggman must have weak construction methods if they are destroyed by a coyote coming out of a cannon. Come to think of it, Antoine's luckier than a certain other anime and coyote, but I'm getting off topic. Sally loses the images, but she still has her animal talking powers. After asking a critter where the main valve is, the group heads to shut things down, saying they'll rejoin Sonic when they're done. As I said last part, they will not see Sonic again in this story. In fact, let's get back to the real plot. Tails is safely flying above Metropolis Zone while Sonic does all the work, going through staged obstacles and encountering those oh-so-lovely Shellcracker and Slicer badniks. As we learn the real reason Sonic left the group to keep everyone safe, he admits missing their company. You know, having someone to joke around with while going through certain obstacles like the old giant nut thing, which he uses to smash those annoying Astron badniks. Man, I wish players of Sonic 2 can do this for real. And here we are, another Sonic vs. Eggman fight. After a brief dialogue about remembering things, Eggman unleashes his duplicates. But the fight's cut short due to power loss. Well, looks like the Sally Trio served a purpose after all. Sonic taunts Eggman, and the real one makes a break for it, saying the Death Egg is already charged. Sonic meets up with Tails and gives chase. As they approach Wing Fortress, Sonic tells Tails to ignore it. Why? It's a decoy. Eggman's space rocket's already in the air. As soon as the rocket, along with Sonic, arrive on the Death Egg, the Hedgehog sees how bad the world really is. Eggman says the world's trying to return to its original state which actually is threatening the planet. But once he roboticizes everything, it'll stabilize. Sonic gets another memory flash, this time of him and the Doctor's one-on-one -on -one battles. This makes Sonic want to set things right. Not if Eggman, piloting the Death Egg robot, has anything to say about it. Eggman makes two critical errors during the fight. One, telling Sonic that he's using all seven Chaos Emeralds to power the station. And two, causing enough damage to expose some wires, carrying said energy. You know what that means, Eggman? You just lost. You can try every attack, but this is Super Sonic you're dealing with. You stand no chance. Snively reports that the instabilities of the planet are getting so bad that not even robotization can fix it. This is not helped by the fight. Sonic ends it before he plans on fixing the world by chaos control. I'm surprised he remembers enough to do that. Also, he hopes to go back enough to save Sally from being target practice. A wave emerges from the Death Egg and everything turns white. It seems Sally remembers enough to realize what's happening. The issue in the miniseries ends with Sonic and Sally reaching out to each other as they fade to white. Despite my constant ribbing on the Sally Trio, they actually served an important role in the story. Them shutting down the Oil Ocean facility, which cut power to Metropolis Zone, actually helped Sonic. Remember, Sonic was about to fight the Flying Eggman. That's what this thing's called in the games. Had the Sally Trio not acted when they did, or later, Sonic would have been busy with the duplicates, and the real Eggman might have slipped off to the Death Egg and roboticized the planet. The memory plot point also comes to the forefront here. While both Sonic and Eggman don't remember everything, they know enough to try to save or conquer the world respectively. 
this is a stretch, but it might also be related to reality trying to snap back. Like how the earthquakes are caused by the planet trying to snap back. As mentioned in the summary, Sonic got flashes of him and the Doctor fighting in the old reality. To be specific, this one's from issue 50, which resulted in Robotnik's death, this one from 175 when Eggman actually beat Sonic, and this one from 200, which ended with Eggman going bonkers. Huh. All these events are from Milestone issues. Coincidence? You decide. Anyway, it's thanks to Sonic remembering enough that he managed to reset the world back to the way it was. Sally getting in on the memory flashes might be the result of her being on the Death Egg when the Genesis Wave was activated. Some of you might ask, how is that possible? She died before the wave was activated. As gruesome as it sounds, there might have been some brain activity left in her when the world was rewritten. But you have to also consider Snively, who was also on the Death Egg when the world changed. He didn't question his memory at all, as far as we know. Either we don't see his reactions to the old memories, or he was nowhere near as close to the Genesis Wave generator as Sonic, Sally, and Eggman. Or he's rather not that important. Anyway, Sally's flashes include issue 47, where she falls into a coma. By the way, that's someone in a Sonic suit. Long story. Issue 50, when she wakes up from said coma. Issue 130, or sometime before, in which Sally's mourning Sonic's death. When in reality, he was in space for a year after saving the planet from aliens. The two rekindling their romance, probably issue 222. And finally, encountering Eggman's gun turret. What? No memory of the infamous breakup slap? The game elements presented in this issue were well done for the most part, and while Wing Fortress got skipped, got a rush towards the end after all, there was a nod to it unlike other skipped levels. This final issue gets a 7. It's an alright conclusion to this story arc, and do I need to say how much I enjoy Tracy Yardley's work again? And so we've come to the end of Sonic Genesis. Some might like this story arc for various reasons, others might hate this story arc for various reasons, and there are those in between. Here are my thoughts. It was... okay. Personally, I would have liked it if it was an issue or two longer, especially around the Sonic 2 portion of the story. But I understand why they needed to go back to the main comic plot. I mean, it was left on such a cliffhanger. Sonic Genesis, to me, doesn't stand completely on its own. In fact, when the graphic novel was released, it included the ending of issue 225 as a prelude, and issue 230 as an epilogue. While it wasn't planned at the time, there were some things in this miniseries that were reused when the world was transformed into the new universe, especially during the Countdown to Chaos arc, transforming the world to more resemble the games, issues with memory, though in the case of the new universe, it ultimately went nowhere except for stabilizing the coal, having Rotor being a strong mechanic, and earthquakes threatening the planet. Luckily for the new universe, the earthquakes only resulted in splaying the planet and releasing an eldritch abomination, and not the destruction of reality, at least in the main Sonic world. As we wrap up Sonic Genesis, Sonic has succeeded in restoring the old continuity, and spoilers, turn things back enough to save Sally. But Eggman will have something else in store for these two, but that's a story for another time. So folks, have a good day, and be safe. Not the smartest decision, Sonic? Well, what did you expect when you're exposed to space? A joyride with flight attendants serving chili dogs?